G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. Let's talk about feeding pollen to the local native species Tetragonula hocking's eye. So, firstly, why will we need to feed pollen to our bees? Well, there could be a couple of reasons for that. The one reason here in North Queensland, I'm doing it now, and it's just starting the beginning of the hot dry period, is because there's been a drought for over a year. The ground's as dry as a dead dingo's donger, and as a consequence of that, there's not much pollen about. And so you run the risk on weaker hives of the bees running out of pollen. So feeding any bees around this time of the year can be a good thing. It just, if you like, tops them up. Equally, you would feed a hive pollen that is very weak. Perhaps it's been attacked by a pest and it's fended it off but it's weak. Perhaps attacked by a fighting swarm, weakened it again. Perhaps it's just weak because you did a split or did a brood lift and it just hasn't got enough stores to keep it going and the drought has just weakened it to an extent that it needs topping up. So all these uh, reasons could see a need for you to feed them pollen. Now there's pollen substitutes at work, we'll do another story on that down the line, but I feed my bees pollen that I collect from native hive rescues. So what I do is I collect surplus pollen and store it in the freezer in plastic containers like this one here. And as you can see it's just a plastic container and it's utterly chockers full of pollen. Now, I get the cleanest stuff for storage. Let's talk about pollen very quickly. Pollen is a protein. Proteins are made up of heaps of links of amino acids. You've heard of amino acids. They call them the building blocks of life. So in Science 101, you need amino acids to build the proteins, that's the muscle, that's the tissues in your body. Without proteins, you can't build baby bees. But what bees do is they ferment proteins. Proteins, when all the amino acids are really locked together in long chains, is inaccessible to the bees. The bees just can't digest it. It's like digesting starch. A lot of people can't digest it without breaking the starch down to sugars. The same with the proteins. Bees can't break down the proteins in pollen, so they put them into pots and allow natural microorganisms to break down the protein into peptides. That's smaller chunks of proteins and again from peptides to amino acids. And it's those amino acids that our body, a cow's body, bees can absorb to make new tissue. And thus, you need fermented pollen, not just grabbing a branch off a tree and sticking in front of the hive. It's not as good. So, when do we do it? You can feed bees both internally and externally. But if a hive is weakened and you're feeding the bees, I personally do not like internally feeding the bees pollen. That's opening up the hive and dumping the pollen in. Because A, the bees may not clean it up. B, you may introduce pests hidden in that pollen and then suddenly infect your hive. And C, if the bees don't mop up all that pollen inside the hive quickly, you will attract all sorts of greeblies, pests, and you can even kill your hive. So I feed it externally. Now, I like to do it early morning when the foragers just start leaving, so instead of looking for pollen out in the wild, they come across the pollen out the front door. A hive like this at the moment, I would not feed. 
because there's utterly no activity at the moment. You've got to wait till the foragers start appearing. Now a hive like this, just starting out on the morning foraging run. There's bees around, there's even some pollen coming in, and you may see some. All because you've got a bit of pollen coming in, doesn't mean you don't feed them. If you notice the bees taking pollen in, there's not much pollen on their legs. So this hive is ripe for a feed. So, I suppose the next job is let's start feeding bees. And how do you do it? Well, it's a relatively simple process. You just put one pollen pot near the entrance at the side. No more, no less. More pollen pots will just mean you attract pests. One pollen pot will probably be cleared up by the bees easily in a day and that's what you want. So in a relatively strong hive, there's no need to feed wax or anything else or any honey laden stuff. So I just put one pollen pot. And there he is. I just crushed him up a bit. Whoops. Just tucked him there. And we're gonna we'll come back and just see how that one goes. Now on a weaker hive, we might do something a little different. This is my swarm capture hive, and you can see the first bees are coming out of that. For some reason, this suddenly died in the arse in terms of the number of foragers coming out. And what I suspect is that the queen died during the winter, and I think it's requeened, but the numbers dropped right off. Let that plane go over. It's still foraging activity, but boy, didn't the numbers drop right off. So, I'm going to give it a little boost. Now on this one, because the numbers drop right off, the pollen pot I'm using on this one, and I'll position it, uh, oops, you don't see that too easily. I'll position it over here. You'll notice I've included a bit of and I'll just use the term native beeswax to don't care what anyone else wants to call it and, uh, and it's even got a little bit of honey soaked on it as well that is to give them a nice feed we'll see how that goes